Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? First, a special appearance right there. The Bicep of Truth is here in attendance, and you know the Bicep of Truth never, ever lies. Boom. All right. Good to see everybody. So this is our impromptu weight cutting seminar Q&A. Call it whatever you want. It's nice to see everybody in here right now. Feel free to ask any questions, whatever question you want answered regarding weight cutting, really weight loss, but more so focused specifically on acute weight loss, which is over a very short period of time. I want to start open sourcing all the information I've gathered throughout the last two plus decades working with the world's greatest athletes. Now, during this period of time, the team and I have found unparalleled success in that we are the most successful team having done this for the longest with the highest success ratio working with many of the world's greatest athletes over an extended period of time. And we've been able to aggregate quite a bit of information during our tenure. This information I'm starting to package now as I want to share it with you and anyone who is attempting some sort of acute weight reduction. Whether or not your goal is to compete at the UFC level, maybe it's an amateur wrestling match or a smoker in your local gym. Heck, even if you're just trying to get summer shredded and beach ready, these techniques can definitely help you. So I'm going to start pulling back the layers now and hosting some videos such as this right here on the Mike Dolce Knows YouTube channel, which I think is a great outlet for us to begin this series. Now, we're also going to create more content that will not muddy up the traditional offerings on our social channels, something that's very focused, very directly focused on weight cutting. So if you're interested in more elite level of weight cutting, please text me the word weight cut to 732-487-3445. You can look in the chat right now, that, that text message number, that's my phone number. It will literally come to my phone. I will be the only one and texting you and, and you know shooting you messages and replying to your messages and reading your messages. So it comes directly to me. But when you text me the word weight cut, again to 732-487-3445, Five, I will be able to curate the content for you specifically. We'll probably build out a private group, maybe like a Facebook group, something like that. Um, I, why did I do this? Let, let, let's step back for a second. Why did I do this? Well, more so recently, I've been contacted by many athletes, many athletes and many teams and many parents. And it's probably the parents of athletes that have me most motivated to start putting this information out here. Now, over the past 20 plus years of working with these athletes, the world's greatest athletes, I have been honored and blessed to have walked with them during their journey. And I've been a, a key element in much of their success. Mostly, I pride myself on keeping them healthy. That's my, my biggest point of pride is having allowed these athletes to train healthy, to compete healthy, to retire healthy. So when a parent reaches out and says that their, their son or their daughter is trying to lose weight, trying to cut weight, trying to drop weight, and they, they, they contact our team for this information. Well, that really resonates with me because I remember myself as a young 13-year-old impressionable man who was trying to figure out the sport of amateur wrestling. Now, wrestling was my only way out of an impoverished um, lower, like I, we weren't even, we lived in a lower middle-class community, but we were in poverty. Wrestling was the only way I had to get an education and to get out of there. And unfortunately, my wrestling team was not good. So I knew the only way that I could even have a chance of improving my life, or so I thought at that young age, was 
to master my weight cutting, master my weight class, master my strength training, master my nutrition, master my conditioning. The only way I was going to do well as a wrestler was I was going to be in better shape than everyone. I was going to be bigger, stronger, faster, leaner, more athletic, more healthy. That, that, that was really, that was my motivation. And that was an unyielding motivation at that age and stage of my life. And I went all in. And fortunately, I was blessed with the opportunity to do everything wrong. Everything wrong. I had coaches who were good men, but terrible, terrible with regards to sports science. They did what their coaches did to them, and their coaches only learned that from doing what their coaches had did to them. So we were working on archaic, like mid-1900s techniques. Suffer, sweat, starve, dehydrate. And work it off, work it off, work it off, work it off. I remember being locked in a sauna. It was like a 10-man sauna, 20 athletes locked in the sauna in our sweatsuits with hats and hoodies and gloves. Our socks pulled up around the outside of our sweatpants. Everything was tucked in. And then hefty garbage bags we had on our bodies and all that was tucked in so we could sweat more. And I remember seeing the athlete next to me pass out but we were, we were packed in there so tightly, he couldn't even fall to the floor. He would pass out. Everyone would scream at him, and he would wake back up again. His little head would pop back up, a little 119-pounder on the team. Point is, I did everything wrong, and I don't want you guys to do wrong, and I don't want you to go through what I had to go through. And, of course, so that was at, at 13, and then in my mid-20s, I was hired as the head strength coach of Team Quest North. The number one mixed martial arts team on the planet at that time in history. Team Quest was the home of Randy Couture, Matt Linlin, Dan Henderson, Evan Tanner, Chael Sonnen, Nate Quarry, Chris Lieben. The names go on and on and on and on. This was the number one fight team in the world, and they hired me as the head strength coach in the early 2000s, and I worked there for five years before continuing on, and during that period of time, I changed the entire landscape of weight cutting and weight management for the fledgling sport of mixed martial arts, which was previously known as No Holds Barred, NHB. I was working with these NHB athletes in the late 90s and early 2000s, which is how I became friendly with Robert Follis and, and Randy Couture, who eventually in 2004 offered me that job as the head strength coach for Team Quest. And then I took that opportunity and ran with it with the benefit of having the world's most elite athletes, 40 of the greatest athletes on the planet I had in my stable, in that, that, that big-ass pole barn, um, you know, in, in uh, Gresham, Oregon, I think it was on Stark, right? Stark Avenue in Gresham, Oregon. And all my old, old friends uh, will certainly remember these, these amazing days. And during that period of time, I was able to hone the science that I had picked up through all the years of practicing it and all the education and all the time in the classroom and all the time in the lab, but most importantly, all the time in the gym. So that information now I've been able to distill down with the help of my team of licensed registered dietitians, exercise physiologists, multiple um, academics holding master's degree in a variety of the sciences. Also, which, which currently we have PhD candidates on our research science team. That being said, we've had an amazing team here. NSCA, CSCS is, of course, is a part of our team. We've had an amazing team to help form and mold and vet the information that we have. So now let me jump in and answer your questions. Let's see what we have here. Omar, boom. What's up, coach? Good timing about to cook some wild caught salmon. Always on that Dolce lifestyle. I'm proud of you, brother. My man, Omar. How long before weigh-ins do you stop creatine and does it affect performance at all coming off of it? John Hancock, great question. And briefly, anyone and everyone interested, if you want to be added to my completely free weight-cutting mastermind 
group where I will provide you more information on weight cutting as we start to aggregate it. We'll likely break it into a Facebook group, let's say. We'll offer more modules, free tutorials, so we don't muddy up um, the Mike Dolce Knows Network. We're probably going to be putting much more specific content into this weight cutting group. Text me the name or the word weight cut. Again, to 732-487-3445. Now back to John's question. How long before weigh-ins do you stop creatine? And does it affect performance at all coming off of it? Number one, we typically stop creatine 15 days before a scheduled weigh-in. And certainly no closer than 10 days out. Now creatine monohydrate, that is our preferred form of creatine. There's quite a few different variations out there. We prefer the monohydrate. That's the one that we do suggest, but individual preferences are fine. That's up to you. Creatine mon monohydrate is an energy substrate that is highly effective in the majority of those who have used it in improving performance. Creatine effectively extends your muscles ability to contract under resistance, either under tension, under load, or for greater time. What does that mean? Typically, you can add, I think, anywhere between 5 to 30% of strength or endurance through a traditional course of creatine. And again, ind individual results vary greatly. I'm a hyper responder to creatine. It works really well for me. I can add up to three reps on a max 10 rep set, taking creatine over about six weeks where, you know, we, I'm talking true maxes. I've been training for over 30 years. So this is, these are true maxes. Creatine does an amazing job to the point that I hardly cycle off creatine anymore. I pretty much take creatine year round at this point. I might come off for a day or two, a month or a week here, a season here or there, but creatine, the effectiveness is just cannot be discounted. That's me personally. Do your own research. Now, we stop 15 days before because creatine will put six pounds of fake weight on me due to its cell, cell volumizing effect. You will swell up on creatine in a good way. And if your diet's on point, your hydration's on point, you will look crispy, but you will be heavier. So if you're cutting weight, you want to get off that creatine about two weeks beforehand so that fake weight can disappear. Does it affect performance at all? Well, I would say we would have to assume there could be a reduction in performance. But of all the athletes I've ever worked with, I have not seen any discernible evidence to show that they were at a detriment from coming off creatine 10 to 15 days prior to competition. Josh, what's up, Josh? Good to see you, brother. Hey, coach, when a weigh-in is in the afternoon, before the weigh-in, do I still smash out the water by 12 or do I change it up at all? When a weigh-in is in the afternoon, before the weigh-in, so I'm a little confused. I, I, when the weigh-in is in the... So let's assume it's in the weigh-in is in the afternoon the day before. Where typically, I think Josh, Josh is talking about the protocol of the UFC. Most weigh-ins have moved to the early morning weigh-ins now. If you watch any of the UFC events, you will notice the athletes are weighing in at 9 a.m. local time. So wherever the fight card will be held typically, unless it's Brazil possibly and maybe over in the UK um, and that they have what's called TV time over there. Everything is rigged for American television. But here in North America, weigh-ins are typically at 9 a.m. 9 to 11 is the typical weigh-in window, albeit a few commissions are a little bit of, of you know, flaky out there. So at a 9 a.m. weigh-in on Friday, let's say, we typically taper water at noon the day prior which means most of our athletes, we're trying to get in a gallon of water by noon of the day before, ensuring the athlete is super hydrated. That is a much easier way to make sure to manage the health of the athlete, the hydration of the athlete, but also we can work with the body's natural mechanism to release water in an efficient manner that does not um, that does not, I'm losing, missing the word right now, 
uh, stimulate does not stimulate that emergency stress response, right? So we hit the water high the day before, then we taper off right around noon. But Josh, that is going to work really well, whether your weigh-ins at 9 a.m. or later on in the afternoon. Jello Shot says, I can't believe this Q&A about weight cuts are all free. I appreciate that. Again, I'm trying to open source as much of this information as I can for you, for the athletes out there, for the families out there. I want to make sure you guys are able to compete healthy. Bicep of truth right there. Look at that. Bam. 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 The bicep of truth never lies, my friends. Really, I want to put as much of this information out there for you guys, whatever I can do. That's why it's like, ask me anything. I'm an open book. Ask me anything. and I will always give you the honest answer here. This is a great opportunity for me to share some of this information. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, also an example of what to eat the day before weigh-ins. Well, if you're following our three weeks to shredded protocol, everything is, is outlined for you. If anyone's interested in our three weeks to shredded protocol, you can simply click the link below. We have links. We have all sorts of great information. We have over 1,200 free, again, free. We have so much free content. We have over 1,200 free articles on our website, as well as personalized online diet and exercise programs for a small fee and even one-on-one -on -one private coaching with me. We try and make ourselves as accessible and available to everyone with every goal in mind. That's why I do these free talks. So hopefully I can give you enough information, take it and run with it. Um, Josh, no, no I, I think I understood Josh. Um, Pat Hulse, what's up, my man? Hey, coach, I think I remember you mentioning something about using fiber when cutting. Can you speak a little bit on that and how it affects a weight cut or weight loss? Pat, great question. Now, many of the coaches in the weight cutting industry avoid fiber. And this is, in my opinion, to the detriment of their athlete. In fact... I don't know of any other elite coach, right? I know all, all the elite coaches. I really have to, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do a, a bro chat with all of the, like, I'm going to try and get, I'm going to try and get Tyler Minton on here. I'm going to get Jordy Sullivan on here. Um, I'm going to get a, a Dr. Capodogli on here. I'm going to try and get Andy Galpin on here. That's a good, that's a solid four right there. Uh, I'm going to try and get, you know, reach out to the PI and see if I can get Charles Hugh on here. Um, that'd be five. I'd love to get like, you know, three to six coaches. Maybe four is probably going to be the sweet spot. Uh, plus myself on there. Um, and we will have this conversation. Now, I, I know and I've, I've seen Tyler um, and Jordy. And we haven't really had this conversation. Jordy and I kind of like almost had the conversation on a different podcast. But we said we'll, we'll, we'll um, hedge it for another one. Now, fiber, fiber is necessary. Fiber is important. And in our opinion, fiber is integral to an effective weight cut. Now, here's the issue. Fiber attracts water. And from what I've heard, not now, not specific to any of the coaches I just said, but many of those in the weight cutting, weight management industry avoid fiber in the last three days, five days, some as much as 10 days prior to the weigh-ins because they say fiber attracts water. Therefore, we eliminate fiber so the athlete doesn't hold as much water. And they go very much more towards a, a ketogenic style of meal plan. A lot of like nuts and, and meats with very low fruit and very low veg and very low fiber and also very low carb. That is almost the opposite of what we do at the Dolce Diet. Now, I have a ton of science to support what we do, but I will also point to our resume. Well, we have a 100% success ratio in, in getting athletes to the scale on weight, on time, every single time. And we employ a high fiber protocol. In fact, we even add additional fiber to the athlete's meal plan during the last five days as they enter into the weight cut. 
Fiber has an amazing digestive property to it in that it allows the food you are consuming to be more efficiently digested, absorbed, and partitioned. It keeps your entire digestive system working optimally. It helps remove impacted food matter that can take a longer period of time as it makes its way through your digestive system. And that would be the meats. Now, we don't typically consume steak and chicken and fish as we get closer to the scale. In fact, we start to eliminate steak and then we eliminate chicken and then we eliminate fish as we get closer to weigh-ins because of their digestibility. Steak takes a really long time to digest it can stay inside your digestive system easily and a healthy human can have steak moving through your digestive system for 72 hours. That's three days. So if you ate steak on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're stepping on the scale for UFC weigh-in and the steak you ate on Tuesday is still inside your body and that bulk matter is adding weight to the scale in which the athlete has to further dehydrate, pulling water from the brain, from the heart, from the muscles, when, in our opinion, in a more digestion-friendly protocol, the athlete steps on the scale completely empty with no impacted food matter, thereby lessening the amount of total water that needs to be flushed out. Well, this is one of our operating procedures for at least 20 years. I was, I was talking to Randy Couture about this back in shit. When did he fight Tito? We were sitting at a, 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 a bar of, of all places right next door to team quest. We were having this exact conversation. Was that 17 years ago? So, Pat, I hope that helps, and I hope the context of the story is helpful also. So I, I will get that, that podcast set up because I, I respect all the gentlemen that I, I named. Um, and also, I'll, I'll try and get Jackie Kaminsky on here also. Uh, we we need, need some of the ladies on here too. Uh, the, the fight dietitian, the fight nutritionist, I think. I, I always get her and, and Jordy's handles confused. I'll get Jackie on here too. The business. Hey, coach, if I'm going going into fight, you've said three weeks to shred it is set perfectly to lead into a fight. Does this mean three weeks to weigh in or the full four weeks with the double three week? That's up to you. Both work extremely well. One week is, is a lead in week. So you only need the, th the three weeks specifically. And if you have any issue, you can just contact our, our customer support team. So everyone who signs up to the Dolce Diet.com, our online membership platform, you have full access to our three weeks to shredded program, to our living lean program. We're about to release our brand new four by four program, which you're going to love. Later on in the summer, we're going to host our squats and steak program, which is a massive strength gaining and bulking program that will all live on the Dolce diet.com all members will have free access to every program we have plus all of our strength training programs just so you know but to answer your question if you start day one through day 21 you will be perfect because it'll continue to day 28 so if you go day one to day 21 done deal if you want to push even further essentially you will be repeating that last week so, and some people do like, we have a lot of our bodybuilders and bikini competitors who love to do that because that really drives them out at the very end. And they'll, they'll use our, our weight cutting, um, Dolce step method and a lot of the, uh, the, the natural diuretic, um, protocols, uh, that we utilize. So I, I hope that helps business. Ask me any follow-up. Thanks coach. I didn't write it correctly. Josh, no worries, my man. I, I think I, hopefully I got it down for you. Old school, my 13-year-old son started wrestling. No info from coaches as how to eat and hydrate during the season as well as the 24 hours prior to the match. Will this group be help helpful? This group will be exactly what you're looking for. 
This will be like, in many ways, it will be a parent support group for their their stress and anxiety of of preparing their children. And I got to tell you, most of the rest, every wrestling coach, well, that's almost, almost every wrestling coach I've ever met is such a dedicated, passionate, amazing human being, so selfless to devote their time to your children, to in many times leave their own children, their own family. They, they work all day. They get off of work. They drive straight to the school to run wrestling practice and stay with the athletes afterwards. And it's, it's a very thankless job, which is why I'm not, I've, I've been offered multiple times to be a wrestling coach at my alma mater and, and some of the local programs. I have, I have a seven-year-old and a five-year-old at home right now. I just simply do not have the emotional bandwidth at this stage. As my children get a little older, you better guarantee I'm going to be a wrestling coach at, my, at the local schools and the youth programs. I'm trying to figure out right now how I can set up like a, a community wrestling program that I can be a, a part time. But anyway, that, that's beside the point. Yes, this and, and what, what is uh, old school talking about right here? Text me the word weight cut to 732-487-3445. I'm creating a group to bring the most efficient cutting edge weight cut strategies, techniques, protocols, science, anecdotes, first person accounts. We'll have me, like, we'll do a lot of private conferences once or twice a month, like live Q and A's inside of there. Cause I, I don't want to totally muddy up our social media channels because it, it, it's going to become very specific, very niche. And this is a great place that I can start adding a lot of our content. We have so much content. We have thousands, thousands, literally thousands of documents all relating to weight cutting, peer reviewed, um, evidence based, um, you know, studies and, and, and meta analysis and first person anecdotal um, stories and events and protocols we've used on specific athletes, like so much information that we have to share. So yes, old school, text me, wait, cut to that phone number and you'll hear more about it soon. But it's exactly, this is what you're looking for. Chris, bicep of truth never lies. bicep of truth never lies baby never lies never lies um coach in that picture of mirsad on the wall he looks crazy shredded what body fat percentage was he at he was probably right in the fives so i would say in the fives i you know he could have even been in the fours but i wouldn't say that publicly i would say he's definitely in the fives when you look at him on that scale and you went when like to see him in person, there's not a, a shred, a dimple of fat on his body. So, but I'll I'll say in the five, because anyone who talks about oh, I was at three percent body fat, yeah, that that's a whole nother level. To go from it's it's as hard to go from eight because I've been at five percent when I was doing UFC fit. To go from 10 to 8%, well, that's really hard. To go from eight to six percent is twice as hard as getting from ten to eight. To go from six to five percent is twice as hard again as going from from uh, uh, six to five. Like every digit percent you get down in the single digits, the 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 challenge is double. Because your body does not want to let go of any more fat. Like for most men, once men get to like that 12, 11% range, the body really starts to fight back. And I was, I was having a great conversation today at the, the Russian Banya that I go to. I was sitting with a bunch of, of, of gentlemen who have different health fitness backgrounds and we were talking about weight loss. And one gentleman, he was he was struggling with a few things in his life, weight loss, loss related. And I won't share that here because it was a private conversation. But we were speaking about the psychological aspect of losing weight. Now, whether you have 50 pounds to lose or five pounds to lose, we must embrace the psychological component to weight loss that most people do not understand. 
And I think that's why I've been so successful as it directly relates to weight cutting. So I keenly and uniquely understand what happens emotionally and psychologically to an athlete cutting weight is I've personally cut weight hundreds of times. I don't even know how many hundreds of times. I mean, I had like 140 matches in my high school, give or take, around there, boxing, jujitsu, grappling, um, um, mixed martial arts. I might have 300, I might have cut weight myself over 200 times easily, easily over 200 times. Closer to 300, maybe all the tournaments I've done and all the this stuff, it's a lot. Especially amateur wrestling. You're 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 wrestling 20 to 30 times in season. Forget about out of season tournaments. Like all of my wrestlers out there, you guys know that's you're doing you're cutting weight a hundred times in four years in high school for for an average wrestler, JV wrestler. You're weighing in a hundred times. So point is, I've done that so many damn times. I understand psychologically what it takes. But now to put it back here to you guys. I've also been extremely lean, right? I've been extreme. Like when I did UFC fit, I had to get down below 8% body fat. I got down to 5% body fat. And then I had to hold that because I had a press tour, international press tour. And I had to hold that because everywhere I went, everybody wanted me to take my clothes off. Every, every TV producer, I would, there's, I was, I was sick of, I'm like embarrassed. Honestly, it's, I had the conversation with Rich Franklin, three-time UFC world champion, Rich Ace Franklin, one of my good friends. We had the conversation. We're embarrassed to take our shirts off anymore because there's so many images of us with our shirts off and so many people kind of like, very like, it's weird. Take your shirt off. Like, yeah, go, go get undressed. It's like, what the fuck? Like, it's, it's a weird thing to like have to get undressed to go to work. Think about that. So psychologically, of course, I had to walk that journey. I'm on fucking billboards in Times Square with my shirt off, right? In Sydney, Australia, on the side of a building, like a 60-foot version of, of me, fucking naked. You know, it was like really weird stuff. And there is a deep psychological component to this. Now, I under I remember so distinctly having these mental battles with myself where my body's just screaming, screaming, screaming for food, like begging me, please like eat, 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 eat this, like a sliver of avocado. I just, just an extra third, an extra sliver of avocado. I just, I, I remember this so well. I just wanted to eat it and I couldn't eat it because I'm going to be on camera. And I, I got to be tight, tight and, and all this, this fucking thing. So why I say this to you guys, everyone who's listening right now, this is a psychological journey. Now, this is why I don't recommend most people go to 5% body fat. Maybe once in your life. I'm not mad at that. Sure. Bucket list it. I think every man, every man should get down below 12% and hit 10. Maybe once a year, once every three years or so, twice a decade, maybe guys, you know, let's, let's think about this ladies. Let's try and see how low we can get ladies, ladies. Let's hit 20%, 19%. I think that's a good thing, but to hold it for a month, three months, six months, like I had to, whew, uh, no way. No way. So uh, I, I know I went a little bit long on that, that Mirsad question. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, he, he looks incredible, right? Absolutely incredible in that photo. And he put in the work. That is, a, that is a three weeks to shredded body right there. Hey, coach, when will you release the dynamic warm-up? Also, update on the Dolce way. Brian, thank you so much. Honestly, my man, I forgot. <laughs> I Full transparency. I forgot completely about the dynamic warm-up. I forgot. So thank you, Brian. 
I'm writing it. This is my daily journal, my daily like in office stuff. I have to, I can't show it because there's, you know, stuff in there stuff. I let me put this in my daily notes right now. With a bunch of stars and ex exclamation points at the end of it. Brother, thank you for the reminder, man. Totally forgot. And I'm always thinking, like, what new content should I shoot? The Dynamic Warrant. Brother, thank you. The Dolce Way? Next week, baby. We're back. We are back in stock. The new Dolce Way will be out. We have all brand new packaging. That's what took a little longer. You guys are absolutely going to love it. Um, easier to store, new packaging, very eco-friendly because that's kind of part of our ethos. So the new packaging we have, this is the old packaging of the Dolce Way right here. Um, if you can see it, very cool, very sleek. Now, if you don't know the Dolce Way, you definitely want to go to metcon.com slash Dolce so you can look, read about it, and educate it. I know some of you guys, I know that we're going to have a bunch of academics in here. I know inside the, the text list, I know I have a bunch of, of just awesome, amazing humans like that, you know, I, and I'm getting DMs on, on Instagram right now. I know I have some buddies out there and, and, you know, peers out there who are high, high level, like high level um, academics out there and, and people in the industry and, and pro athletes. And, you know, we got a lot of really cool people that, that are jumping in here. Read the ingredients of the Dolce Way. That's what I ask. Go to metcon.com slash Dolce, our partner in the product. Metcon.com, our distributor, Metcon, run by my good friend Dan Cox, who is an Ironman triathlete. Dan Cox, very accomplished in his own right. We came together and took the Dolce Way to the next level. But I want you to just read the ingredients so you can understand exactly who we are and our ethos and why we came out with the Dolce way and why we constantly push to make it better and improve quality. Now, I don't know that the quality can be improved anymore, honestly, because this is the highest quality weight protein on the market bar none. And, and just go to metcon.com slash Dolce and check it out for yourself. You can see it. Four ingredients. We actually use and spent the money to flavor our vanilla whey protein isolate with actual vanilla bean. And there's vanilla bean literally inside your canister. Four ingredients. Cold process, cross flow, micro filtered, grass fed, organic whey protein isolate. Do you know how much money that costs that we don't pass on to the consumer? Our margins are super slip. Super. We're, we're, I'm not in the Dolce Way business to, ha ha, I'm going to make money. I'm in the business to make sure you have the highest quality whey protein isolate to keep yourself healthy. And honestly, the Dolce Way was created because I was utterly dissatisfied with all of the proteins on, on the market, especially when my wife was pregnant. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to feed my wife this off the counter. Even some of the, even the organic stuff out there was garbage. But anyway, so that's, that's the answer, Brian. Dolce Way next week. I think next Thursday, don't quote me because it's, it's not listed yet we got a, a couple things to jump through but uh, we're, we're going to do uh dan's going to come on the show and we're going to talk about the packaging Jan, dan is a genius when it comes to that literally the packaging now uses 90 percent less plastic than this canister so you want to talk about going green and eco-friendly and all that and that we don't even we don't pass that on to you we take the hit on that also um, when to start dandelion and Uva Ursi during camp and is it daily? Yes, it is daily. And typically I'd say five days out, five days out. So the dandelion root, the Uva Ursi and the vitamin C, these have an amazing, healthy, natural diuretic effects, which is they allow your body to naturally release stored water. A lot of the ladies we work with just our regular clients. If you're getting into a little bikini, you need to fit into that little dress we say, hey, start popping some dandelion root. I'd say take 500 milligrams three times a day, day one. See how your body responds. Day three, maybe up it. 
a thousand milligrams three times per day. We've never really gone above 1500 milligrams three times per day. We typically keep it below 5,000 milligrams, although you, you could go considerably higher, but there's the, the, the minimum dose for the maximum effect. Uva Ursi is a cofactor for dandelion root. They just, Uva Ursi by itself is like, eh, it's, it's, it's all right, diuretic. Dandelion is pretty powerful. The Uva and the dandelion together work really well. It's like a threefold compound. And vitamin C also is very beneficial. We take vitamin C year round, but when we're getting ready for uh, to, to cut weight, Again, we'll kind of start to um, raise vitamin C intake, a few thousand milligrams. The best summer diet is bleep and greens. Well, I would say bleep is, is an all-around nutritive supplement that we should all be kind of like looking to, to cultivate and, and harvest a year round. So don't just uh, save that for summertime, my friend. Um, the business, when increasing potassium, is it around five days out? And you mentioned you like to add cantaloupe. How much? How frequent? Well, here's the great question, business. You've, you've clearly gone through a lot of our stuff. It sounds like you have our books, um, a lot of our content. You follow our content, which is awesome. Thank you for being a part of our community. You really do have a great insight into this. And you're asking all the right questions. So what we typically do, and let me open source. You know, nobody talks about this stuff. Open source, what we typically do, somewhere between 10 to 15 days out, depending upon the athlete, we start to slowly increase sodium intake. So we create a false ceiling. If my man, Ryan, Ryan, if you're watching this, brother, I, I know you, we've already had the conversations. We create a false ceiling of that increased sodium intake. We create the false ceiling, and then we slowly taper back down right around five days out. And what we do is we pull the extra sodium. We don't pull all sodium because the human body needs sodium. We need sodium chloride. It is a vital electrolyte to live. What do you think helps your heart beat? Every cellular ac action needs sodium. So or sodium is is a, is a partially associated with, with all cellular interaction, right? Going down to the mitochondria. When we talk about muscular contraction, well, hell, sodium is vitally important. So we never go zero sodium, ever go zero sodium. Ideally, I would like to see you guys never go below 1,500 milligrams. So what we say, business, is we increase sodium above our baseline, artificially creating a false ceiling. We then go back to baseline, and what happens? The water pours out. Now, we can actually aid this process because most people think sodium restriction leads to water reduction as far as total body storage. That is only partially true. It is not a matter of sodium restriction. It's a matter of the sodium to potassium ratio. Oh, so dropping your sodium will lead to water loss or increasing potassium relative to static sodium will increase sodium loss. Now, if you artificially create a false ceiling and then you drop that while slowly titrating up potassium intake you'll see a dramatic loss but i will say be careful never use any supplements to do this never use ever use any pharmaceuticals to do this what do we do we simply feed our athletes cantaloupe i know it sounds crazy i know it sounds insane but if you look at the potassium content inside a cantaloupe, you will be blown away, blown away. And what I said earlier, we don't go zero sodium because if we went zero sodium and then increase potassium artificially and unnaturally high, well, you could have some serious health issues. Now, I must say this is not medical advice and this is for entertainment purposes only. So do not try this at home. Speak with your doctor before trying any diet or exercise program. Right? I'm not a medical doctor. Although, 
Although my initials are MD. So, I mean, take that for what it is. That's how we do it. One of, one of, and that's just one. That's like a 7%. And what we do is we take like 15 different small, tiny little aspects that have like a 5 to 10% benefit. And we just stack them and stack it like the fiber. We stack them like the, the reverse pyramid of the water intake. And we stack it like the, uh, uh, like the fasted lists. And we stack them like the way that we, we take, we don't drop calories. Think about this. How about this? There's so much information. And I'm, I'm a 45 minutes. I was going to do 20 minutes here. What we typically do is we don't cut calories. Now, this is when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with the elites. We typically don't cut calories. We spread the meals. So let's say, let's say, um, what was Rhonda was taking in almost 3000 calories a day, even going in the fight week. I think she was at like 32, let's say it's 3000. So we'll have her at 3000, three weeks out, 3000 spread over five meals. Then we'll go 3000, but spread over six meals, two weeks out, one week out. We'll at 3000 spread over seven meals, three days out, 3000 spread over eight meals, which means her meals get smaller, 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 but we don't drop her calories. Now, many people will argue. Many people will argue. This doesn't work. The thermic effect of nutrient consumption is a, a zero sum gain. Six of one, half dozen of the other. It takes the same amount of energy to eat it in one meal or spread over eight meals. Well, I could say in vivo, in the actual human, in our experiments, working with the world's greatest athletes nearly every single weekend for like 52 weeks a year, damn near, for two decades, well, we found we can actually keep calories higher if we spread them amongst more feedings. Well, that's a pretty big hack right there. Where most weight cutting, weight management, weight loss programs, what do they do? They cut calories. We don't cut calories. We increase meal frequency. I've never had one athlete have a negative outcome as a result of that. Oh, and you've probably, if you followed our stuff for the last 15 years, 10 years for sure, you would hear me say all the time, we feed our athletes to the scale. That's what I was talking about. We feed our athletes to the scale. Some athletes like Mursad, we would actually increase his food intake because that kid's metabolism was crazy. He's like an ecto, hard leaning ecto mezzo. We would actually, because we would spread his meals, his metabolism would run so fast, he'd start dropping too much weight and we would increase his meals. Crazy, right? Can artificial sweeteners make you gain water weight? Great question. Ali, and I would say yes. Now, I don't have the evidence to pull, so this is more of an anecdotal response right now, but I'm sure I could find the evidence. I'll, I'll task one of our team members to actually do that. Why is this? Dr. Rhonda Patrick actually has spoken about this many times, and I'm going to piecemeal some of what she says and some of the information that I know and then from anecdotal experience. Artificial sweeteners are inflammatory inside the microbiome, which is the digestive system right? Artificial sweeteners, a foreign substance, elicit an inflammatory response inside the gut. That then has a catalyst effect throughout the body, and everyone's different, of systemic inflammation, which is why a guy like Lane Norton he pushes artificial sweeteners and Greg Doucette, they push artificial sweeteners. I don't know why. Why? I don't know. I do know why. I do know why. That's for another time. But why not just tell people to just eat high net nutrient, healthful whole foods instead? Because we know definitively artificial sweeteners have a negative impact on the microbiome. They are inflammatory by nature, which create a catalyst effect of systemic inflammation throughout nearly every tissue in the body, some tissues more so than others, depending on the individual physiology. 
You know that, right? Is there a certain food that you eat and you wake up the next day and you're just like a water buffalo? Well, that typically doesn't happen when you eat blueberries or wild-caught salmon or white rice or white potato even. It's when you add the artificial, the synthetics, that's when the infl in inflammatory response kicks in. I hope that helps, Allie. Because I feel bloated after eating a lot of sugar-free products. Allie, you, it's funny. You literally just validated what I had just said, not seeing this, this, this part. That's exactly what happens. That's exactly what happens. We know that happens, right? That's exactly what happens. So awesome, Ali. Ali, definitely, we're going to talk about a lot of this also. Text me, ladies and gentlemen, Ali, everyone here, the business, um, text me the word weight cut to 732-487-3445. This will go, we have a service, but this will go directly to my phone. What that does is by texting that, I know what group you should be in. Like I have my mentorship group. If you want to be a a Wait, oh, look at all you guys. Holy cow. Awesome. I'm looking right now, tons of people that are already in here. Um, we have a mentorship group. So if you simply type the same thing, same phone number, if you type the words mentor, boom, you'll be put in the mentorship group. If you want to become um, a coach, like a Dolce Diet certified coach, simply type, because we have a new event coming up, simply type the word coach. Text it to the same number. Um, what else do we have? Da, 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 da. We have our shredded contest. If you want to join our summer shredded contest, simply type the word shredded to the same number, 732-487-3445. But this is specifically uh, for weight cut. Um. That helps. Awesome, Pat. Glad to help, brother. D, what's up, D? Good to see you. I got skinny wrists. Any recommendations to build those up? Lots of grip work. Now, there's tons of different ways to do grip work. One of my favorite ways to do grip work is if you can, I mean, if you can get a five-gallon bucket and fill it halfway with sand or even rice, like go to, call. you can get a 10-pound a, a bag of rice at Costco for like $10. Fill that partially up in like a five gallon bucket and just dig your hand in, dig your hand in and just like grind and rip and twist and curl. That's going to build tremendous amounts of strength through your forearms. But at the same time, there's no muscle here on the wrist itself. The muscle starts to insert deeper down right? Deeper down is, is where the muscle starts to insert. So those muscle insertions, those start to build up and you build tremendous strength. But small wrists make your musculature look bigger. Uh, Stevie, look forward to the release of the 4x4. So that will be on thedolcediet.com. All members, you can click the link below. You'll have access to all the new uh, um, products and programs that we have coming out. We got a bunch of programs coming out soon. Omar, thanks for sharing these stories. Coach, appreciate it. Omar, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. And I think these stories help. I have so much experience. Now there's, I, I, I have so much experience. I have so many stories that I can share. And I think I'll start doing that a, a heck of a lot more, um, which is fun because there's always a lesson. Every story, there's a lesson, right? Um, Hayal says, which fighter had the toughest weight cut in your career by I'm on one of the OGs who have the original hard copy of Three Weeks to Shredded. Is it this copy? Like, how OG are you? This copy came out in 2014, right? Does anybody have the 2007 spiral-bound version of Three Weeks to Shred It? If you do, leave it in the comments below. I want to talk to you. That, that, is, that is OG, super OG. Uh, which fighter had the toughest weight cut in your career? Um, Kelvin Gastelum was tricky for sure. Johnny Hendricks was definitely tricky. Um, who else? Tiago Alves. You know, Tiago wasn't as hard. You would think like the storyline is hard, 
But in practice, Tiago's wasn't as hard as the storyline made it out to be. Um, who else was a hard one? I would just I would say Kelvin and Johnny. Those were the two. Hard, now there I got great. Sto there's other stories like Tiago Alves versus Papi Abidi. I mean the the whole Charles Oliveira scale thing, scale gate. Get out of here. We were over in London, England. Tiago Alves, the main event versus Papi Abidi on that fight card. Chris Lieben's on the card. Mark Munoz is on the card. A couple other um, athletes I'm friends with were on the card. Guess what? The UFC didn't have their big scales there. They were using these, these crappy bathroom scales. There were four bathroom scales. And guess what? Every single one of the scales were wrong. Which means we'd step on scale number one, it'd say, let's say for Tiago, 173. We'd step on scale number two, it'd say like 171.5. We'd step on scale number three, it'd say like 169.0. We'd step on scale number four, it'd say like 180. Everybody had the same issue. So we were like, fuck, what do we do? Lowest scale. Lowest number. We do that. Lowest number. We get to the venue. And I think Tiago was like half over when we got to the venue. Munoz was worse, I'm pretty sure. I think Munoz and Lieben both had really, they were worse off. There's quite a few athletes. I think there were six athletes on the cart that were all over um, as a result of. What happened? We step on the scale. So no worries. I, I told Tiago, I'm, I'll do a whole video on this. Um, I told Tiago, I said, don't even worry about it, man, because I've been here. Relax. Let's, let's take the anxiety. It's all good, bro. Don't even worry about it. We got... 20 minutes until weigh-ins, it makes no sense to even try and cut weight right now because as soon as we get warm, we're going to have to peel off again, stand in line, get on stage. Let's just fucking relax and chill because everyone else was freaking out, anxiety through the roof. Chill out. We just chilled out. We hung out. We had some laughs, calmed down a little bit. We get in line. Boom. We step on the scale. He steps on initially first touch. I believe it was 171.5, slightly over just a little bit, and it was ticking on the way down. No problem. We have two hours now. Get him off the scale. We go in the back. We warm him up. Boom. Immediately. His body opens up. Sweats comes off within 30 minutes. We're back on the scale. Made weight. No problem. Way worse of an issue than Charles Oliveira. We're over in England in some ice box, in some like crappy kind of like a bar, weird venue, not in the beautiful Las Vegas. Are you kidding me? All the amenities in Las Vegas with the UFC PI and all the great stuff that they have now. We, we were like, this was so old school. This was like, like, like Band-Aid and duct tape days of just get her done. We got it done, no problem. I'll, I'll do a deeper video on that, though. Um. Are wrestlers cutting weight Hitting the heavy weights with the splits that you often recommend? No. Or do they have to switch a lot to lighter weights? Most wrestlers, most wrestlers, maybe they touch weights once a week in season. Maybe. Now, if, if you're you're at the, the, the D1 level, it's a little bit different because now you have an NSCA, CSCS overseeing all the protocols. It's like uh, my buddy Gary Calgano um, over at uh, Oklahoma. Um the man, I got a great relationship with Gary. I know what he does uh, with all the, uh, you know, John Smith's athletes, the Oklahoma athletes. This is where DC went through, what Johnny Hendricks went through, this King Mo Lawal went through, it's where Randy Couture went through, right? No joke over there. And a galley, Gary is, is amazing. But most of the wrestlers, high school wrestlers specifically, no, I'd say just like, you know, one touch of the weights once a week or so, because these, these poor kids are killing themselves anyway. How much weight in pounds do you think is best when losing weight per week? I think a one to two pounds per week is ideal. That way, that's what I've been doing. That's what I'm focused on. I'm just trying to lose one pound per week right now so I can maintain maximum muscle tissue. And as you can see, the bicep of truth will show you it's working. Right? That's the goal. I mean, striations in the biceps now, right? Bicep of truth is super happy. Striations in the bi. It's funny not to be creepy. I got striations popping out my glutes now. 
I haven't had striations in my glutes since probably the UFC fit days. And I was 20 pounds lighter back then than I am right now. Think about that. In the UFC fit days, I was in the 180s. Right now, I'm 202. So I'm 20 pounds heavier right now than in the UFC fit days. But part of it, it, much of it is because I'm going, it's a slower burn right now. So I'll probably get down to that UFC fit body fat percentage. I want to get down. At first, I was saying I wanted to get down to eight. Now, eight. I want to, I want to get down lower. I want to get down to six. It's like, that's like, I changed my goal from 8% to 6%. And once I get to six, then it's like, all right, I'm going to go to five and then I'll chart that. And I I've been keeping all of my protocols here. And I'll share that for you guys probably later on in the fall though, because I'm going to give myself most of the summer at this age and stage of life. It's, it's harder. Like I said, it's harder. And I'm, I don't want to lose any muscle tissue. I know that's not weight cutting related, but maybe it, it kind of like fits. My, my goal right now is to maintain every ounce of muscle first and drop body fat second. If my only goal was to drop body fat, I would probably be down at like 6% right now, but I'd be in the low 190s. I would easily have burnt off 10 pounds. So that, that's not the goal, just so you understand. But I will teach you guys that protocol down uh, once we get into the fall, uh, especially for those of you who are over 35 years old. It's a lot different. Those below 35, you're dealing with one body. Those of us over 35, it's completely different. Men and women, this is perfect. This is for you. And if you guys are interested, I will touch on this um, in that weight cut group. So again, just text me the word weight cut, 732-487-3445. Text me, get in that group. Um. Weighed in at 252, started at 265, a week and a half left. Halfway through three weeks to shredded, you're down 13 pounds, right? So you are actually above the one pound per day goal or, you know, it's not a goal. It's just a kind of like, uh, it's what we've noticed. So three weeks to shredded, typically individual results may vary, but we expect one pound of weight loss per day on three weeks to shred it right? Which is an extreme weight loss protocol that has been, was built for the world's greatest athletes, vetted 100% successful over 20 years. And now it's available for every single human on the planet on our website, vdolcediet.com. If anybody's interested, just click that link below. It is freaking awesome. And no better time than right now, because it's summer season. You like, the next three weeks are going to pass by regardless. It's Memorial Day weekend. So let's just crush it. Amir is down 13 pounds in a week and a half. Why not, right? Why not? So just click that link below if you're interested. Sal says, hey, Mike, when you become a coach, is there an average for a steady business? An average, it's Sal, absolutely. We have coaches right now inside our system that have become Dolce Diet certified coaches and they take advantage of my mentorship program where I push them and challenge them and teach them to become six-figure coaches. Now, I have multiple six-figure coaches inside the Dolce Diet system. Now, they're, you're an independent. They're independent coaches. They get our certification. They allow me to continue coaching them on how to build a profitable business. I'm waiting for my first seven-figure coach. There's a few that I'm guaranteeing are going to be, a, and that's seven figures in one year, by the way. My goal and my expect, every single, every single fitness professional should be making six figures per year. Every single, now listen to me, everyone here, right? take a time out. Every single fitness professional, you should be making lawyer money. If you're not making the same rate as a lawyer, you are disrespecting your own time. Dolce, how can you say that? What is most important in people's lives? It's their health. If you are a health professional, a fitness professional, a trainer, a, 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 a fitness coach, whatever you want to call it, and there's every country because we deal with international right? Every state here in the United States has different laws and criteria and things. Every country is different. Whatever you want to call it. If you are a health and fitness professional dedicated, 
passionately dedicated to improving the lives of your clients, you should easily be crushing six figures a year. You should be kill you should be hitting ten thousand dollar months, no problem. It's only twenty five hundred dollars a week, which is not that much. If that's not that much if you know what you're doing, if you know how to scale your business, and if you know how to to market yourself, you know how to position yourself, you know how to present yourself to your clientele, where to find them, and how to do it at the lowest possible cost. So, Sal, to answer your question, 100%, man, 100%. It's funny because I have a ton of coaches who've come through. And then they stall. Shiny object syndrome. They come through, they do our thing, and then they want to get a precision nutrition, and they want to get a this one, and then they want to get this one. And then they start going through, and they just start collecting certifications, but they never start collecting dollars. They never, ever, ever start getting that cash. I was making money. I was making adult money as a professional coach at 17 years old. I had zero certifications. Zero certifications. This is what I want. This is what I teach. So our DDC, our Dolce Diet Certification and Fitness Conference, half of it is dedicated to the science of nutrition and dietetics. The other half is dedicated to the fitness professional that wants to live a, a financially independent lifestyle, create cash flow for positive business. That's what we teach. And then we have the opportunity for you to continue on through my mentorship program to stay a part of it. Some people do. Every single person who's gone through the mentorship and continues crushes it because there's no there's no reason not to. They're accountable, right? They, they can't blow things off. They can't dilly-dally. They can't drag their hands through the sand, right? You can ask any question at any time. And then I'm going to say, how'd you do? Did you do it? Did you finish it yet? Let me see it. Text it to me. Shoot it to me. Email it to me. Let me see that PDF. Let me see your, let me see your proposal. Let me see it. Let me just shoot. Like, give me, like, set, set the camera up. Let me see. How do you set up your floor? What's your gym look like? Give me a tour. Why is this there? Why'd you spend money on that? Don't do that. Get rid of that. Change this position. Spread your floor. Open your floor. That's three more bodies you can have on your floor right now. You're losing $75 an hour simply because you got some stupid hack machine sitting on your floor that nobody ever uses. So that's, I get passionate because that was, that was one specific, uh, Member and that changed everything. They sold the hack squat, they got cash for it, they were able to open up their gym floor, they could now fill that time. It was awesome. I have the spinal copy black cover. Boom! You got it. You know what I'm saying. Um, hey Uncle Mike, I'm 29, just got diagnosed with mild hip degeneration. Any exercises to stay away from Werber? All of them and none of them. Here's what I will say, Werber. I also have more, I have aggressive hip degeneration right now myself, so I'm in the same boat. Find a doctor of physical therapy who can help you diagnose and provide a course of treatment for you. This is what I do. I know what the hell I'm talking about, but also we need professionals who are highly skilled in a very specific area to assist. So Dr. Dan Gross, my DPT, doctor of physical therapy. I went to Dan for three months, three times a week. Ran me through tons and tons. Like, I know nothing. You're in charge. He, I'm going to give you all the feedback. I'm going to ask you a shit ton of questions. And I'm going to just do what you tell me. I've become an expert. I believe in it. But I don't feel qualified in sharing that information with you. Now, I'm going to put some videos out there on hip issues and low back issues and a lot of these other triggers and pain points and pain relief and things like that. But Werber, my best suggestion to you is find a highly competent, skilled doctor physical therapy in your area that works with athletes. Not one that works with geriatrics, not that I'm mad at geriatrics, but it's a different goal. Certain people, they just want to be able to stand up and sit down. Not us. Number one is I want to push off a possible hip replacement surgery as far into the future as possible. Number two, I want full athletic expression. What do I need to do? That's what that those are the questions you should ask. 
Allie, what's your opinion on Sweet Sweat before the sauna? It doesn't work. Sweet Sweat Albaline doesn't work. I used to use it, and I track everything. I measure everything. I mean, I am the marble copybook king. Like, let me... I'm, I'm not just talking smack here. I am the marble copybook king. What better? These, these, these are hard drives. These hard drives cost me $1. $1 at the dollar store. These marble copybooks. I have marble copybooks filled with data from every athlete I've ever worked with. What we found was those who use, use the, the topicals, and I won't say the name, those who use these topical sweating agents, they lost the same amount or less. And they were less comfortable during the process. Not once did I find one athlete who lost more weight as a result of the topicals, not once. At best, it does nothing. But typically, it was did worse. Sal, thanks, Mike. I'm down seven pounds on three weeks to shred it. I have one and a half weeks left. Then on to Living Lean. We'll send text for Coach to see if it's doable for our family. Absolutely, Sal. I love it. I'd love to have you in. You would, man, you're going to crush it. The next DDC, we're going to give a massive price discount because we understand what's happening in the world right now and inflation and soaring food prices and all this other crazy stuff. We're going to make it very affordable for those people who want to come in. And normally, it's a high ticket item and it's worth every freaking penny. At the highest price, it's worth every freaking penny because I see what our coaches are getting paid afterwards. But we're going we're gonna to make it really affordable for a lot of people. Um, all right, that's it. So everyone, if you want to be entered into our weight cutting group, just simply text me the word weight cut to 732-487-3445. This is totally, totally free. No purchase necessary. There's absolutely no obligation. I just say, Hey, I got all this really cool weight cutting stuff. I'm going to host it over like on a Facebook group or I'm, I'm then going to do a live chat on weight cutting specifically, or like, here's a really cool weight cutting article I wrote back in 07, or here's an interview that, you know, Chael did about weight cutting here. You, you probably want to listen to this or check out this new product we found to be very effective for weight cutting, or here's the supplement that I really like best. So that will be there. It, it, there's, there's no obligation. All this stuff is free guys. Happy to share it all with you. Um, I do want to thank our sponsor, Merrick Health. So check the link below if you want to get comprehensive blood work done at the lowest price possible. That doesn't, you know, it's, it's hard, right? Getting your blood work hard is, is hard. Getting your doctor to do the correct blood work for you is hard. It's all just a pain in the ass. Go to MerrickHealth.com slash Dolce to learn more. Look at my panel. I have a male panel and a female panel. This is every blood work or blood test that you should be getting in our opinion. MerrickHealth.com slash Dolce. Use the Dolce promo code. You'll save 10%. I get no kickback on that. That's all yours. It does let Merrick Health know that we sent you, which is nice because they do sponsor the show and the channel and some really cool things. Very happy. I use Merrick Health as a customer. My wife uses Merrick Health as a customer. We're using Merrick Health now. They have a medical team on staff that can review your blood work for you, can give, give you a complete analysis, and then offer any medicine that you might need, which is amazing. This is amazing. The true benefit of Merrick Health as a comprehensive medical team to support you in your health and fitness journey, plus here we are. I'm here to assist you also in the process. Whatever we can do to help you guys, we are definitely here for you. Um, Werber, interesting. Uncle Mike, I'm working with the doctor now, finally, for my TRT. My test level came back at 67 on the dot. Will this hinder fat loss? Werber, I would strongly suggest you click the link below and go to MerrickHealth.com right now. Strong suggestion. A 67, that's an area of concern, my friend. I don't want to scare you, but I want to say I've never seen a 67 before. Now, maybe it's a different type of test, and I'm, I'm you know, I've, I've never seen anything below, I think, 150. So, 
there there is some likely some issue going on here now maybe i'm i'm maybe it's the the, the way it's written I'm, I'm not sure i could be misconstruing it but i would say hey i know merrick health is absolutely amazing click the link below learn more um ask any questions whatever i can do to support you in the process of course i will um but let's get to the bottom of this my friend all right, guys and gals, thank you once again for being here. You were all absolutely amazing. An hour and 15 minutes. This was supposed to be like a 15, 20 minute stream. And here we go. Uh, leave any comments below if you have any further questions. I would absolutely love to hear that. What did you think? Did you enjoy this? We don't do many live streams here on the Mike Dolce Knows channel. Leave any questions below this. Feel free to share this anywhere. Or again, we're trying to get engagement for the algorithm. So YouTube gives us a little bit more love. And that comes from you guys. The more you engage us, give us a thumbs up and, and you know, all the fun stuff. Subscribe if you haven't, of course. Um, all the stuff that you do for free on this channel to engage with us, that certainly helps. And I greatly appreciate that also. So thank you guys. That's awesome. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. we got a great show for you tomorrow. Really cool stuff. Really cool uh, topics um, that we're bringing your way. And a couple awesome interviews. Finally, we're going to be uh, we're going to be posting for you guys. All right. Have a great